Hi, it's Lucy here and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm going to create four cards using my new watercolour paint palette today. Now you may have seen some YouTube videos where experienced watercolour artists create amazing art, but I'm a novice, so if you're wondering how you'd go, seeing how I go may give you an idea. I haven't had a lot of experience with watercolour paints, but when Lightwish asked me if I wanted to review this palette. When I saw all the gorgeous metallic paints, I jumped at the chance. I have been wanting a set for ages. So let's see how we go and hopefully you'll love the cards that I created at the end. If I can do it, you can do it. I'm going to use only a few other supplies, no pattern paper, which is unusual for me. So first let's take a look at the palette and it has 88 watercolor paints and includes a water brush pen. The paints include 12 fluorescent colors and 28 metallic colors and they are gorgeous. So to practice, I'm going to use a scrap piece of watercolor card and I think it's important to note that paints don't work well on normal cardstock and paper. It's okay for splatters, but not any big areas as it'll warp the paper. And I'll add a bit of water to the paper using the water brush. And now I really want to try out one of these metallic pink paints. So I'll squeeze my water brush to get some water into the paint and then mix it around until the paint and water combine well. And you can choose how concentrated you want the paint to be. The more water, the less vibrancy you'll get. And if you add only a small amount of water, the color will be much stronger. If you want to get the most concentrated colors, it's best to swap from the water brush to a normal paintbrush so you have more control over the water amount. And I'm just using cheap brushes I've had forever, not fancy ones. And let's see how these go. I really enjoyed creating these, so if you want to see more in the future, I could create another video for sure. I know I'll definitely be using these for splatters. The metallics are so shiny. Hopefully you can see this here. And then let's try the gold. And there's a couple of golds to choose from. One at the top of the palette and two here. I love having three different options of gold as sometimes you want a bright gold and sometimes a more antique gold is required. But of course you can also add a little bit of brown in it if you want to dirty it up or change the colors you can really combine colors together and i'm using the dirtier antique gold here and i absolutely love it i'll be using this on some of my cards today it has such a gorgeous shine to it i'd love to know if you like using watercoloring paints on your cards let me know feel free to send me your instagram handle even so i and maybe some of my subscriber friends will want to come check them out too I'm going to create a gold rectangle and I'm not sure my lines would be that straight so I'll add some washi tape to help keep my lines fairly straight. I'm not a perfectionist and I hope I help you to realize card making isn't about being perfect, it's about enjoying the process. If something goes wrong we're creative and we can hide it or fix it. Now I want this to be a beautiful thick gold rectangle rather than watercolour so I'll use minimal water to create that gorgeous lush gold I'm after. I feel like I've added too much water though and so I'm just going to dry it with a paper towel and then this way I can just add some more and really create that gold. Whenever we're trying new techniques there's always room for a few errors and that's how we learn to get better I guess. I'm going to leave the tape on until the paint's dried so that there's no leakage. Now I mustn't forget they have normal paints too and they are fantastic for splatters and I say that because I'm not a watercolour artist. I will try creating some easy watercolour flowers but not on this video as I'll need to practice a little if I'm going to do a video on it. These blues are all the same paint and I'll show a close up in a moment. So now the gold rectangle is dry, I can take off the tape and we can take a look at that. I did accidentally get a little bit of gold on the other side of the washi tape but that's okay because I'm going to cut this out anyway. I will add it to a card. And just to create a fun effect, I'm going to use one of my black markers and I'm just going to doodle around the rectangle a couple of times. I'm not 
trying to be straight lined this time otherwise I could have used a ruler but it's going to go on more of a funky card. So now most of the paints are drier I'll just show you close-ups of them a little bit better so you can see the gorgeous colors. These blues are all the same paint just like with the metallic pink ones I showed you can get different shades and strengths of color from one paint depending on the amount of water you use. And how gorgeous are the vibrant red and blue together? They'd be fun for the 4th of July or Australia Day cards. And I'm also going to add some of the metallic paints to vellum to see how it goes. It's like cardstock and paper, so it will warp a little, but I'll show you how you can create cards with vellum and paints. The process looks really ugly, so please stay with me here. I think the card looks beautiful when it's finished. You'll see I have two water pots here. One is for dirty brushes and the other one is to keep it clean so that I can use that for adding the water to a different paint colour. And once I've finished creating the pink background, I'm going to add some splatters in a darker metallic pink and gold. And while I'm on the vellum and creating splatters, I decided to use another part of the vellum for just splatters. I'll also add some neon orange to it with the pink and gold. And the neon orange is amazing. It's so vibrant. I'll use this on my funky card later. I look forward to hearing which is your favorite out of these four cards. They're all very different. Okay, so once the paint is dry, I'll punch out some butterflies with my really old butterfly punches. They're Martha Stewart punches. I'm not sure they're available anymore, but the large one is on its last legs, I think. So I'll just give it a little helping hand with my craft knife where it didn't cut all the way through. To create added interest, like I always do with butterfly wings, I'll bend the wings up from each side of the body. Then I'll use something tubular to create a soft bend in the wings. You may notice shortly that one of the wings on one of the butterflies didn't punch properly, but that's okay. I'll use it and we'll see if it's noticeable once the card is finished. I've die cut a rectangle from watercolor paper to create a background for my butterflies. I'm going to choose the same colors I did for the butterflies so it coordinates perfectly. And to create the splatters, I'm just tapping on my brush. I'm not overthinking it or worrying about where the splatters will land. In my experience, just going with it works better than trying to land them in the right place. Crafting should always be fun and not stressful or worrisome is my tip. I've decided to add just a little bit of the light pink paint to the edges of the rectangle. I don't want it all to be even, just some scrapes of paint here and there. This rectangle doesn't cover my card front and I'm going to add a gold border so it'll just be subtle. Gold card can be expensive so instead of wasting it all under the watercolour card I'll punch out gold butterflies. I won't need to add scrap paper where I've punched these out to make the top layer even as the watercolour card is very thick so no one will notice. If using normal papers on the top layer, I would normally add some scraps in the gap and I hope that makes sense. I'm going to add the gold butterflies underneath the pink vellum ones and I think this will look really nice. For the smaller butterfly, I'll use my lollipop stick to bend the wings seeing as they're a lot smaller than the larger butterfly. The great thing you can also use these paints for, and especially the metallic ones, is you can use it instead of gold card or silver card if you don't have any. You can use these paints and I'll be showing an example of how I do it in one of my next cards. I'm just gluing the butterfly bodies together. I'm not gluing the wings at all so that they'll have separation and you'll be able to see the gold and pink layers. I'll use some double sided adhesive tape to add the top layer to the gold card and then the two layers to the card front. I'll just add glue to the bodies of the butterfly so that all the butterfly's wings stay up. I'm also going to add some gold pearls to the butterfly bodies just to give them a little bit more interest. And then I can just add a sentiment and this card is almost finished and I think it looks really pretty. And what do you think of the card? 
that pink vellum looked awful, didn't it, while I was making it, but the butterflies turned out really pretty. Okay, on to the funky card, and I'm going to die cut a small rectangle from that splattered piece I created earlier, and I'm also going to cut out the gold rectangle from earlier too. I have a couple of things sitting on my desk and sometimes instead of putting them away, I'll try to use them on my next card. So it's a little bit lazy. <laughs> so I've got this clock and lace doily and I may as well add them to the card. I'll move things around a little bit with all these cards. I didn't know what I'll be creating. I also find a banner ephemera piece and I'll use that along with a printed sentiment too. And I'm going to add some more marker doodling to match the gold rectangle doodling on this card too. Somehow we'll make these pieces work together or you can tell me if you're not a fan of this card. This isn't my usual style, the next two are, but it's fun to try something different sometimes, isn't it? You may have watercolour paints already and hopefully this video will inspire you to get them back out if they've been hibernating. But if you don't have any and want to try some, I'll have links to this watercolour set down below in the description box. They're on Amazon, US, UK and Europe. And if you're in Australia like me, you can buy them. You just need to pay extra postage and that probably goes the same for most countries. I'm only gluing underneath the bigger splatters and that way the vellum will stay in place but you won't be able to see the glue underneath. And if I add a banner to the top right hand side I can glue underneath that and that will make sure that that top right side stays down. For this next card I want to create a big gold splodge. I see this on cards sometimes and I've always wanted to try it so now I can. I'm using a larger brush paintbrush which will help give nicer edges to my paint splodge and just in case you're wondering this paintbrush is a size 14. I need to use a little extra water to get the splodge effect and I'm going to move the paint around on the paper so I get a lovely edge to the splodge. I'll then add a bit more depth to the middle with less water and more gold. I'll use the smaller brush to help manipulate the paint and then to create some gold splattering as well. Although I'm using the gold again, I'm changing up the colours this time and using teal to match a butterfly sticker that I have. So I'll also add some teal splatters as well. I want to add a little gold around the card again, but this time I'll try using the little sponge that came with the set. I tried this sponge out the other day and it gives a nice texture so I would like to try different techniques with the sponges and paints at some stage. I'm going to test out the paints on the wrong side of one of these wooden numbers so I can see how it looks and if it's the right colour choice. The issue with painting on something that has a colour like this wood does is that it can change the colour of the paint so the best way is to either use a scrap piece of what you're planning to use or in this case the other side of the number. I'm adding some grey to them to see how that looks and usually you would combine the paints before painting but this is my tester so I'm happy to add the grey over the top to get an idea. But now it comes to painting the front and I'll combine the teal and grey before painting them. I want to get the colour right so I'm adding a darker grey to it as well and some more teal as I want to make sure I have enough paint for the two numbers. I love to trial things for us so I'll try adding in some of Uniquely Creative Sparkle Brush which is similar to Wink of Stella and I'll drop the ink into it as I don't want to contaminate my sparkle brush. And this turns out okay on the numbers, but I really love the sparkle it has created on the card alongside the gold paint. Once it's dry, I'll add it to some black card to create a border and then add it to the card front. I'll peel the backing off this gorgeous butterfly by rolling the sticker off the backing using my thumb. I found a sweet sentiment. This card is for my niece and she's turning 23 next month, so hopefully she'll love the card. This was quite easy to create and if you were to do it often I think you could make quite a lot of cards in one day with the same sort of design. Those butterflies come in packs of 20 I think it is so you can make 20 cards really easily with those beautiful butterflies and the paint. And here's another super quick but beautiful card using only the paint and a paper flower bouquet pretty much. 
I want to match the gorgeous flowers for this card and so I'll check my paint set to see which suits best and the metallic copper is amazing and matches perfectly. I only need to paint where the border of the scalloped die will be as that's the only part that will be showing. It has got the most gorgeous shimmer. I know I gush sometimes but I can't help it. I love playing with new goodies and just crafting in general. I'm using a couple of new rectangle dies from Uniquely Creative but if you don't die cut you can always just cut rectangles one larger than the other or use scalloped scissors. I'm using foam tape on both the bouquet and the sentiment just to give a little bit of added dimension and then I can add some gold pearls and this card is finished and I think it looks really pretty and it was very easy. The bouquet comes from the Uniquely Creative Easter sheets but I've been able to use it here for a birthday card instead. So let's have a look at the cards. I'll have close-up photos coming up too. I'd love to know if you have a favourite. And if you're interested in the paint set or any items I've used today, I'll have the product links in the description box below this video so you can find them online easily. I may also have a limited time discount code exclusively for you below too for the paint set. And I want to say a special hi to Wendy, one of my longtime subscribers. Thank you so much for supporting my channel and always leaving lovely comments. I hope you're having a fabulous day. So that's it from me and this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And don't forget to share me with your crafting friends. That would be amazing. Um, happy crafting, everyone. And bye for now.